Good morning. Good morning, Montana. Hi, Karen. It's magnificent Monday, April the 10th, 2017. Hi, Whitney. Glad to have you on with us. <clears throat> Hi, Shannon. Good morning. We're ready to get started on our uh, Magnificent Monday Bible study. Um, again, just reminding you, we read in the one-year Bible. We're using the ESV uh, version. It's a... Um, Hi, Kelly. Good to see you. Hi, Linda. So glad to have you guys on. Thanks for joining us. But this is a one-year Bible study that breaks down. Hi, Brenda. Gosh, it's good to see everybody this magnificent Monday. Um, <clears throat> it breaks down Old Testament, New Testament, a Psalms, and a Proverbs. And if you read this every day for 365 days, you've read the Bible from the front cover to the back cover. <clears throat> I started doing this many, many years ago because I told God I really wanted to know Him. I wanted to know His heart. <clears throat> and uh, it's been quite a journey. It was hard when I first started. It can still be difficult at times um, to, to be that disciplined to make sure that you do it. But the only reason why I believe the good Lord had me start doing videos was to encourage you. I actually started this as a Bible study with my staff in God's business that he built. And then my mom likes to join in. Had a sister and a brother that likes to join in, and so that's how the videos got started. And the next thing I know, I got people from Alabama and people from Louisiana and Washington State, and just <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. But the purpose of the videos is to encourage you in your walk with the Lord, to encourage you every single day to pray, to have that conversation with God, to have that communion with God, to really act out in sincerity, what the true meaning of communion, of taking communion is, and that is um, eating flesh of his flesh, blood of his blood, drinking his blood, communing with him on a daily basis, a true, true, true relationship with God. So that's the purpose of these videos, and I wanted to say that today because I know there will be some of you that will read today's scriptures and go, she got what out of that? But I can't help it. I'm just telling you, I, I'm as transparent with you as I can be, that when we're faithful in doing this, he takes these words and he makes them relevant for that day, April the 10th. 2017. It's not like it was for April the 10th, 2016 for me, and I didn't get the same thing out of it on April the 10th of 2015. It's for today. It's what I'm going through today. It's my life today. And so that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. It's Deuteronomy 34 and through Joshua chapter 2 that we're reading in the Old Testament. And, and I'll just read this first little bit in Deuteronomy 24. Uh, 34, Deuteronomy 34, so that if you're not reading along, you'll kind of know where we're at. So we've just spent all this time, I mean, weeks and weeks reading Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, where Moses um, led the people out of Egypt, led them out of slavery, out of horrible bondage, where they were treated terribly. Uh, all of the, the many, 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 many... Um, miracles that took place with Pharaoh to get him to let the people go, uh, the Red Sea parting, um, them crossing over, taking 40 years to make an 11-day journey, um, and all this time, 40 years with Moses and, and with Joshua and with Aaron, his brother. And so here we are, we're at the end of this. Uh, Deuteronomy signifies um, Moses' death. And that's where we're at. Um, then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land. Now, for 40 years, really prior to that, I mean, it was, it was during the time that Moses was telling um, Pharaoh to let the people go that God planted this vision inside of Moses of the land flowing with milk and honey. and um, here it is at the end, 
and the Lord showed him all the land. <clears throat> as far as Dan, the land of all these places, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor, and the Lord said to him, this, the Lord said to Moses, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. Moses, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. I will let you see it with your eyes. This promise, this vision that you've had for over 40 years, I'm going to let you see it, but you're not going to go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. Hmm. So, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. The Lord buried him, and not one man's ever found him. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were undimmed and his vigor was unabated. He had full strength. He had perfect eyesight at 120 when he passed and God buried him. And the people of Israel wept for Moses. So <clears throat> here we go. Well, I wanna read one more scripture. <laughs> Deuteronomy 34, I'll skip over to verse 10. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him, for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all of his servants and to all of his land. Never been another Moses. Never been anybody like Moses. Um, he saw the Lord face to face. Mm, mm. And you want to know what I got out of this? I got to thinking about how hard Moses worked. I mean, there was millions. He actually was the ruler and the judge over millions until his um, father-in-law, Jethro, came and said, what are you doing, Moses? You're going to kill yourself. Um, appoint some elders. Get, get the smart ones in here and help them learn how to rule and how to be judged so that you don't have to remember those stories. I mean, we read all these stories. I mean, I, golly, I mean, I had a job where I had 1,600 employees and that ran me ragged. I mean, I, I worked 60, 80 hour weeks a lot when that was going on. Um, I can't imagine millions. You, you kind of get what I'm saying? And so, and then here's this vision. I mean, all of us have a dream. If we really, truly will be still, and really go into where God lives, into, our, into the very being of who we are, he in us, and us in him, there is a God-given dream inside of every one of us. And when we get in there and we know what it is, then we can see it. We, I mean, spiritually, we can see it. We, we can see that, that vision. And that's what Moses had with the land flowing with milk and honey. Or at least on the surface, that's what it looked like. Now, remember, why did Moses not get to go over to the promised land? It's because he disobeyed God. It wasn't because Moses decided not to go. God decided he would not go. And yet here we are in those final days. I've been very blessed to, to, to get to be with uh, my grandma on her last day, to be with my stepdad when he took his last breath and, and a few others. And I, I just don't think there's any time any more tender or any more holy than that moment that here on earth we take our last breath. I, it's just, it's a glorious time for those who really know who they are in Christ. It's a glorious time. Uh, do we miss them? We miss them. But um, we, we really don't grasp what's going on spiritually in those last moments. And with that in the backdrop of me reading what was going on in today's reading, and the Lord showed him all the land. And the Lord said to him, this is the land I swore 
to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will give to your offspring. I have let you see it, Moses, with your eyes, but you'll not go over there. And you know, there's so many of us that would look at the lack in that. We would look and say, oh, but it's been his dream his whole life. He's 120 years old. He, even when he was born, he knew he was different. He, he, I mean, when he was raised in Pharaoh's courts instead of out among the Israelites, he knew that he was destined for greatness. He knew, and then, and then the vision was actually planted by God, a land flowing of milk and honey. And, and so many of us would look at the lack. But you know what? In this final day, I believe that Moses was fully satisfied. He was fully satisfied in the Lord. I don't believe Moses longed for anything in these scriptures that we're reading today. The Lord himself buried Moses. Oh, but to have a relationship with God like that. Moses had just spent days pouring into the people he loved, to pouring into them, telling them, do this, do that. If you'll just obey God, look at the blessings. He pointed them out. Read Deuteronomy 28 again. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed in the city. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. If you'll just obey the Lord your God. That's what he told them. Everything you touch will be blessed if you just obey God. And then he warned them. And if you don't, cursed will you be. Now, Old Testament, remember, Jesus hasn't come yet, but he just, I mean, it's, it's no different than when we're sending our, our children out for the first time. They're going off to college, and it's like, do this, do that. Don't forget to brush your teeth and, and comb your hair, and <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, but <laughs> not really. You, you get what I'm saying, Moses? It's like it was his children, and he's pouring everything into them, and they're getting ready to go off to the promised land. And, and he knows he's not going. He's already been told he's not going. He was told before now that he was not going. And, and, and the difference in how we live our life today, let me just make it personal. The difference in how Elizabeth lives her life today versus what we're reading about with Moses is how often do I look at the lack? Now, I'm better at it. You guys got to see some of my deliverance from this the other day, but I love it have been delivered and now he's fortifying me now he is he's pointing things out to me I've never seen now that's what I was saying when I started this you know you guys will look at this and go how did she get that out of that this is my journey this is where I'm at and this is what's God doing for me as I'm faithful he's always faithful to me and as I'm faithful to him and I pray and I seek him and I say, God, I want more. I want more. If there's anything in me that's not of you, get me out. And, and I read, then all of a sudden, here's this, you know, back in the 80s, they, they cut up the Bible and said, okay, this much of the Old Testament will fit this much of the new. Here's a Psalms and here's a Proverbs and we'll make this into a 365 day reading plan. And on April the 10th, 2017, it was exactly what I needed to hear today. And it follows up with my deliverance of what God's showing me. I had wrong, I had stinking thinking, to quote one of my favorite teachers, uh, stinking thinking in so many areas of my life. And he's, and he's writing it because this is what God told me today. Elizabeth, are you grateful? Elizabeth, are you counting your blessings? Or are you just looking at the lack? And so how thankful are you, Elizabeth? How thankful are you? No, everything's not exactly where I think that it should be. I, have I missed it? I think I've missed it in several areas. But do I have anything to be grateful for? Oh, my Lord. I have so much to be grateful for. I could not even spend 24 hours nonstop counting my blessings and have enough time to talk about the blessings that I have. And yet we'll focus on the one thing on the, on the one thing that we just, it's just not quite there. Well, if I just had this, well, if I could just do that, well, if, well, when I do this, or when I move here, or when I get this job, or when my kids do this, well, when, well, when, well, when, well, when, well, when, well, when I get the promise to the promised land, Moses didn't do that. Moses didn't, Moses was content. And I think it went way beyond just content. Moses was blessed. And Moses knew the glory 
that awaited him when he shut his eyes. Wow. Well, I, I, I don't, I only trust that God gave me the right words today to share with you. But this was profound in me today. He didn't get to cross over to the promise. He didn't get to cross over to the vision. He didn't get to see it. And it was enough. It was enough. Are we living in enough? Are we living in the land of plenty? Are we living in the land of more than enough? Or are we living in lack? The words of our mouth, what's coming out of our mouth, tells the story. Tells the story. So, once again, my father has corrected me this morning. But you don't see me sobbing and crying because he whipped me. Because he didn't. He pulled me up gently on his lap. And he said, daughter dear, got another revelation for you. Daughter dear. I love you. You're, you're my prized possession. You're my prized possession. I, you're my treasured possession. You're the apple of my eye. And I'm going to correct you because I love you. So anyway, that's what I saw. I, I love you guys. And thanks for sharing with me and let me be transparent. And uh, send me messages. Let me know what God's telling you. Because I, I told y'all, you could look at this reading today and go, she got what out of that? <laughs> and he's speaking to you. God is speaking to you. He never stops speaking to you. You just have to be still and listen. I have to be still and listen. There's not one word comes out of my mouth that's not because that's what God's saying and doing in Elizabeth. Um, I get kind of tickled at people that think the things I say is based on things going on around me. It's really what's going on in me that God's speaking to me. And if the shoe fits, so be it. <laughs> uh, but the shoe always fits for me. <laughs> always fits for me. So anyway, I would love to hear your stories. And, you know, one of those mornings when um, you wake up and you read and you go, whoa, that just fit me today. Send me a private message on, on Facebook. I'd love to share in your glory. So thank you guys for being here. And we'll chat again tomorrow. Bye-bye.